This video is on quantities of heat. So there's two major equations we can use looking at factors of heat and their quantity. We can either use our calorimetry equation where we have changes in temperatures and we use our equation of delta H is equal to Q which is MC delta T so mass times specific heat times change of temperature or we can look at the heat of a phase change where our item is actually changing phases and that has the equation of Q equals MHVAP or Q equals MH fusion and here we have Q's the same mass for each one but then we have differences in specific heat times change of temperature and here HVAP and H fusions are heats of those phase changes. So let's identify our variables first. Q is the heat lost or gained And that's measured in joules, which is capital J. Okay. M is going to be our mass, and that's in grams. And that's the same about both of them. But then we come to our differences. Our calorimetry problems have C, which is specific heat, and specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise one gram, one degree Celsius. It has units of joules per gram degree Celsius, in other words, the amount of energy required to raise one gram. one degree Celsius. And you can see that in our units of energy per gram degree Celsius. Delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. So our final temperature minus our initial temperature. And that's our change. And that's going to be in degrees Celsius. Notice that I have joules degrees Celsius in grams, just like my units in my specific heat problem. Here, I have heat of vaporization and heat of fusion. And these are the energy required for the phase change. These are going to be different depending on what item we use, but we're going to focus on water. For water, your heat of vaporization is 2,260 joules per gram, and the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram. For our calorimetry problems, we're going to look at our specific heat. That is going to be different for all three phases of water and for any metal we're using. For the three phases of water, these are found on your reference guide, as are your heat of vaporization, heat of fusion. Specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Ice is 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius. And steam is 2.02 .02 joules per gram degree Celsius. And like I said, all metals will have different ones as well, and they're also listed on your reference guides. These two equations are used at different times. Our calorimetry equation is going to be used when we have a change in temperature or when a metal is placed in water. Our heat of phase change problem is going to be used when we have no 
change in temperature or when we are at a phase change. For both of these, we can have positive Q's or negative Q's, in other words, heat lost or gain. A positive Q is heat gained, and that's going to be endothermic. A negative Q is heat lost, and that's exothermic. Looking at a heating curve, where can we place our two equations? We have our first equation of Q equals MC delta T, or we have our equation of phase change, which is Q equals MH of either fusion or vaporization. This being a heating curve of water, we have our position 1, where we're heating, 2, we're at a phase change, 3 is heating, 4 a phase change, and 5 is heating again. Anytime we have changes in temperature, we are going to use our equation Q equals MC delta T. And our C is going to change depending on what phase we're in. At our coldest temperature below zero, we have ice, then between 0 and 100, we have our liquid water, and between 100 and above, we have steam. When we're not increasing or decreasing in temperature, and we are at our phase changes, we're going to use our equation Q equals MH, and our H value is going to be dependent on the phase change. Going from a solid to liquid, we're going to use our heat of phase change of fusion, which is the 334 joules per gram, and the heat of vaporization between liquid and gas, and that's your 2,260 joules per gram. Calorimeters and transfer of heat. So if we have a glass of water and we put a hot metal object inside of it, we know from experience that that metal object is going to get colder, the water around is going to warm up. This is a property of chemistry. Um, this, is, this happens because of the law of conservation of energy. which tells us that energy or heat cannot be created nor can it be destroyed. So when we place that hot metal in cold water, well, what happens to the heat? Well, it's going to leave the metal and it's going to go into the water. So let's go from the metal into the water. So what gains the heat? Well, the water is going to gain the heat. What loses heat? Well, the metal is going to lose heat. It's going to go down and how hot it feels. Well, how much heat does that water gain? Well, because of our law of conservation of energy, our water can only gain the amount of heat given off by the metal. That's all the more it can gain. So the Q of our metal, the heat given off by the metal, is going to be equal in the amount of the heat given to the water. Now remember, if our heat's given off the metal, this is going to be a negative value, and the heat absorbed by the water is going to be a positive value. But the amount of which is the same. Our negative and positive just tell us direction. Well, what is going to be the final temperature of the water compared to the metal? Well, eventually it's going to have to stop. And it'll stop when they become even in temperature. Therefore, one is no longer colder than the other one. So the final temperature of both, the temperature of the water and the temperature of our metal, their final temperatures are going to be equal.